Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus Christ did, I'm sorry? The commandments don't save you? So wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, let's let's deal with logic. Let's deal with logic for a minute. Let's deal with, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I want to deal with logic for a minute, right? Because in order for you to obtain something, right? If, if you want to be, if you want to be successful in this world, what do they say that you must do? You have to go to school. There's a prerequisite that you must do. You have to go to school, you have to take courses, you have to have a course of actions that you apply to obtain something. So you're telling me that it's easier to get into heaven than it is to get into college? Oh, is be, it easier to get into heaven to be, a lawyer. to be saved from all of this oppression than to get into college? When the prophets of the Most High God step on the scene, God commands us to not spare anyone's feelings. That's right. Noonday is when everyone should be awake, whether you're a great-grandmother, a grandmother, a great-grandfather, what have you. God commands us to wake up here in these last days. Why? Because destruction is near. That's what the Bible prophesies. And the prophets of the Most High God will not be quiet. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, and verse 1, For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. For the Israelites' sake, I will not hold my peace. I will not be quiet. I hope they hear me all the way on the other side of Manhattan. I'm going to prophesy to my people. Why? Because destruction is not. We're getting shot down. We're getting killed. We're the ones forced to take all of these vaccines. We're the ones living in project houses. We're the ones being lied to about our nationality, about our savior, about our God. We're the ones whose inheritance has been stolen from us. That's and you right. want me to be quiet? You want me to be quiet and silent when my people are destroyed? My people don't know who their God is, don't know who their nationality is, don't know about God's commandments. I'm supposed to be quiet because your grandmother's sleeping my brother. I'm not going to be quiet. Thus said the Lord God, read on. For Jerusalem's sake, uh -huh. I will not rest. I will not rest day nor night. I'm going to prophesy in the name of the Most High God. I'm going to speak the oracles of the Most High God, telling you that what? Christianity is a lie. That Catholicism is a lie. That Santa Maria is a lie. That Blue Maria is a lie. That's right. Right. That Guadalupe is a lie. Right. These things are not in the Bible. The Bible says, blessed is he that reads. Right. Open your Bibles and read. Did you ever read about Guadalupe in the Bible? Bring it out! Read about Santa Maria in the Bible? Bring it out! Did you ever read about uh, Blue Maria in the Bible? No! These things are not recorded in the scriptures of the Most High God. These things are man-made. These are the philosophies of men. That's why we must repent and turn back to our God. So no, the Israelites will not be ruled into a corner anymore. Right. You're going to see your teachers. We're going to prophesy out of the Bible, whether you hear or whether you forbear. The blood will be on your hands, not on ours. We're doing the work of the Most High God. We're not going to be quiet. Read on. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness. Until the righteousness thereof goes forth as brightness. What does that mean? What is righteousness? God's commandments. Meaning what? When we see our, our brothers growing their beards, grow, uh, not shaving off their heads anymore, taking care of their one wife, taking care of their children, not strung out on crack and weed and heroin and smoking cigarettes defiling their temples, not having sex with multiple different women, not eating unclean foods, not going to these whorehouse whorehouses that we call churches today. The majority of the men, of the black and Latino men, go to the church, why? Because they know that there are destroyed women in there who have subjected themselves to having sex with multiple different men. So they go to the church saying, okay, well, she's pretty, I'm gonna get her number, and I'm gonna get her number, and that one. Many of our men do that to this day, all the way from their teens, all the way up to their 50s. That's why the church is a whorehouse. There's no truth coming out of the Christian church. That's right. The pastors in the Christian church aren't telling us our people 
anything. If you had been going to the church, the what's the name day. of this church? Manhattan Bible Church, Manhattan Christian Academy on 9th Ave and West 205th Street. If you've been going to this church for the past five years, 10 years, and you don't know that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Simeon, if you're Dominican, or that you don't know that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim, if you're Puerto Rican, or you don't know that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Zebulon, if you're Guatemalan, then you have been being lied to. That's right. Lied to. Bring it you're up. not learning anything in these churches. You understand? Read on. And the salvation thereof is a lamp that burneth. That's the best word. And the salvation thereof, that's the best thing. Sir, what's his name? I don't know. He just come, come, come. We ain't getting that. Invite him. Don't worry about it. We can come out of that. If you're the pastor, sir, are you, sir, excuse me, sir, are you the pastor of this church? No, do you know who the pastor is? Where have you learned from that pastor, sir? That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? That's very true according to John chapter 14. That's very true according to John chapter 14. But you know what else is in John chapter 14? That, that crazy, okay, let's get that for him real quick. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. John chapter 14 is verse 6. You're very right. Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth and he is the light that was shed for the Israelites. You're absolutely right. But there's more. No, not for the whole world. That's not what the Bible says. You've been lied to. Jesus Christ was an Israelite and he was and he died for the Israelites. Right? That's right. The book of John, chapter 14, and verse 6. Right? Jesus said unto him, I am the way. So Jesus Christ said, Yes. I am the way. I am the way to eternal life. Read. The truth. I am the truth. Why? Because Jesus Christ taught God's commandments, which are the truth. Read. And the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So no, we can't go to the Most High God. We cannot get an, an, an enter into eternal life without Jesus Christ. If we don't believe in Christ, there is no salvation. But there's more. Jump down to verse 15. Verse 15, if ye love me. So now we talk a good one, right? We talk a good one. Jesus Christ is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. I'm not negating that whatsoever. Why? Because we just read that directly out of the Bible in John chapter 14. Right. But Christ said, if you love me, what must you do? Read. Keep my commandments. Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus Christ did. I'm sorry. The commandments don't save you? Read again. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's let's deal with logic. Let's deal with logic for a minute. Let's deal with hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I want to deal with logic for a minute, right? Because in order for you to obtain something, right? If, if you want to be if you want to be successful in this world, what do they say that you must do? You have to go to school. There's a prerequisite that you must do. You have to go to school, you have to take courses, you have to have a course of actions that you apply to obtain something. So you're telling me that it's easier to get into heaven than it is to get into college? Oh, is be, it easier to get into heaven to be, a to be saved from all of this oppression than to get into college? Because to get into college, you had to take your SATs, you had to pass a whole bunch of tests, you had to have a certain GPA. There was action behind that. If you didn't do your schoolwork, you failed. Right. So if you don't keep God's commandments, you die. What is, what is sin? Revelation 14 and 12. What is sin, sir? What is sin? I know what it is. Do you know what it is? I know what sin is. No, 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 no. Don't, don't. I'm asking you. 
ask you a straightforward question. Because many of the people might not know. Young brother, young brother, do, what is sin? Do you know? Do you want to know out of the Bible? I'm not going to use my words, my brother. I want you to understand that. These are not my words. This is the words of the Most High God. Right. What is sin? If you don't know, I will explain it to you out of the Bible. Do you want to hear that? Okay, let's go to 1 John 3 and 4. Let's get that for the book. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Right. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Yo, Jeremiah, you should be so focused, now, paying attention when I'm doing. The word transgression, so you can understand, you can look it up yourself. The word transgression or transgress means to break. The process of breaking something. So the Bible just said that sin is the transgression of the law. The law that it's talking about is God's commandments. Right. You ever heard about the Ten Commandments? You've heard about those things, right? Those are guys, those are the, uh, the, the Christian church calls it the Big Ten. But under those Ten Commandments, there are laws and substatutes to those commandments. You right. understand? Right. So when... You, when we sin, that's because we're not applying one of those commandments to our life. Do you understand so far? All right? So now, this is what the Bible says concerning all those people that commit sins and don't seek to change their course of action. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 6, and verse 23. Right? For the wages of sin is death. What does the word wages mean? You, you, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 18, you have a job? So when you get, when you, uh, when you work, you get wages, you get paid. Whether it be minimum wage or $18 an hour, whatever it may be, your wages, you get, you getting paid for something that you did. Read it again. For the wages of sin is death. So now God is saying that the payment, the wages or the payment for sin or your actions in sin is death. So if our people say that it's not God's law that gets us into heaven, that makes no sense. That's a lie that's taught to us in the Christian church. Right. The Bible clearly says that sin is the breaking of God's law. Right. Then it says that the wages of sin or the payment for sin, our sins is death. So if you don't want to die, it would behoove you to, to find out and learn what God's commandments are and apply them to your life. Let's get Revelation 14, 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So that's the point. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus. Why? Because we just read the scripture in John chapter 14 that said, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. So we can't just say, I'm going to do God's commandments and not believe in Christ. And we also can't say, I'm just going to believe in Christ and not do God's commandments. If any man says that he has faith, let him, I'm going to show my faith by my actions in doing God's law. That's what the Bible talks about in the book of James. So that's our message to our people. Repent, acknowledge your sins, and repent of those sins. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.